and welcome to The Spectrum Show. Coming up, we get all the news and top selling games from August 1989. I get musical. I play some games. Have a chat to Jeff. And end with a type in. But first, it's the news. A game has been released that you can't buy. So what is the point of that, you ask? Well, the game is available to anyone who subscribes to the Magnetic Scrolls Club, called Official Secrets. The club costs £22 a year to join, and in return you will get a regular newsletter and the Magnetic Scrolls game Myth. Anyone who likes text adventures will no doubt jump at this chance to grab a limited edition game from one of the best producers of text adventures. Following on from the Magnum Light Phaser released last month, Cheetah have released their own light gun called the Cheetah Defender. Selling at £25, the gun will be more realistic than the space looking light phaser, and they've even got Codemasters to knock out some games for it. Most though are just old titles modified to run with a gun, but this added dimension could prove interesting to play with. Those of a certain age will remember when Monty Python exploded onto the screen, causing parents to write letters, children to giggle, and teenagers to walk around quoting famous lines. This zany comedy is now being converted to the Spectrum, in the form of a game by Virgin Mastertronic. There are no hints about what it would include or how it will be played, but anything with the Python name should sell well, even if the Pythons themselves were not actually involved. It seems that Robocop, the game of the film from Ocean, may be getting recognition as the longest software title at number one. The Guinness Book of World Records is sniffing around, as the game has been hogging the top spot for nearly 20 weeks now being removed only this month by another game. But what could that game be? Let's find out. It's all change, and at number 5 is Emlyn Hughes International Soccer by Audiogenic. At number 4 is Crazy Cars 2 by Titus. At number 3, Running Man by Grand Slam. At number 2, Robocop by Ocean. And at number 1, Kenny Dalgleish Soccer Manager by Cognito. And that was the news and top selling games from August 1989. <laughs> There are several music programs for the Spectrum. There are several music and sound interfaces for the Spectrum. There are several keyboards for the Spectrum. But throw them all together and what do you get? The Echo Music Synthesizer. This interesting piece of hardware was originally released in 1986 by HCCS at an alarming price of 59.95, and that was just for the keyboard. You could also get an amplifier for a further 39.95 but buy them together and you can have a special deal for just £84.90. Later, Curry's marketed the same device and somewhere along the line added Organ Master to the name, even though that's just the name of the software. The keyboard is very robust and well made, with a real solid feel to it. The interface is hardwired to it with a decent length of cable that was meant for the original 128K machines. It does, however, work fine with the Plus 2, as we shall see. Once plugged in, we can load the software, that has the Curry's brand bodged over the top of the original loading screen. At least that's what it looks like to me. The main screen is terrible to read once it loads too, with white text on cyan background. Listed are the different instruments available, starting with the piano. Next we have strings. The software uses all three channels of the Spectrum's voice too to produce sound, so it's possible to play three notes at once. Yes, this unit just allows you to play the Spectrum's AY chip using a decent keyboard, but that's not a bad thing. Next we have organ, not much different from strings really. Then comes popcorn, oh how I wish I could play that song.
Then we have Evolution, a sort of weird wobbly thing. Then Siren, no idea what musical use this could be. And next is Synth, a wobbly sounding thing that may have been very impressive back then. And finally Hawaiian. You can switch up and down across five octaves when playing, giving a nice range. And you can also fine tune things with the pitch. Additionally, you can edit any of the presets using attack, decay, sustain and release, as well as modifying the pitch to produce additional effects. It's actually quite powerful once you get used to it and you know what you're doing, and the only downside is that you're limited to the AY chip. There's more too. You can record, playback and loop music. Setting the record option gives you about 170 seconds of space, and it will record all of the keys including swapping of instruments. You can start again or choose to add to your recording, building up a song slowly, piece by piece. You can then play it back all at once or in a loop. If you are happy you can then save out your tune. This then is a useful piece of hardware if you want to learn music, and I really thought there was some teaching software that came with it, but I can't find any reference to it at all. I enjoyed setting this up and playing with the various functions, recording my poor music and then listening to it back with embarrassment. It was fun and the keyboard really is very good. Sadly there's no MIDI option or additional instruments to load in, but given a few hours you could easily build up your own set. piece of kit then, fun to play with, and a great toy if you are musically minded, although the demo tune that comes with it doesn't really do it justice. This is Beachhead, released by US Gold in 1984. This game is a multi-part arcade game with a variety of different levels set against a backdrop of war. The ultimate goal is to reach the large Beachhead gun and destroy it, but you first have to get there. The first section is pointless really, you simply move a cursor to the flashing square which represents the secret passage, but it's hardly secret really, there's a huge flashing square over it. Next you have to guide your fleet across a dangerous estuary to try and land on the beach. Here you control rotation and speed of the vessel, and once you learn the pattern this section can become pretty easy. Once all the ships have landed you move another cursor to the beach and then protect the troops as they disembark and to do that you take control of a gun shooting incoming planes. This section is really good and the planes look very nice. Your ammo is replenished slowly so you can't just sit around and hold the fire key down. You control left, right and up and down so you have to aim carefully to hit anything. This can be quite challenging but it's still great to play, and it reminds me of 3D Tanks by DK Tronics a little bit. 
Next comes the enemy ships. Here you have to hit the ships that are firing back at you. To do this you move your gun to get the right trajectory. You are guided by the message at the bottom right telling you if your shot is too short or too long and eventually by a process of elimination you will get them all. If you survive then it's back to the moving cursor again. And I understand that this is all part of the game and that it joins up the different sections but still it's a bit of a waste of time when a simple message would have done. The next section is a horizontal scrolling tank part where you control a tank as it heads up the beach towards the gun. The screen scrolls smoothly but the land based obstacles are a bit bland. The tank animation is good when it changes direction and here you can move up and down to avoid the barricades, blocks and holes. As you progress you will come across gun emplacements that fire back so you have to either dodge them or destroy them. Some of the navigation in this section is really tricky too so you need to be careful and in some places you have to be pixel perfect. Finally you arrive at the gun, a massive thing perched on top of a hill. The hill has various holes in it and these need to be shot in a specific order. Luckily they flash to tell you which order it is. As time ticks on the gun slowly rotates towards you meaning it's a battle against time and accuracy and this is where the adrenaline really starts to pump. If you don't do it in time the gun will destroy you and it's back to the tank section. If you do manage to get all of the small holes then the gun explodes and the game is complete. A tough challenge but one certainly worth having a go at. The variety of gameplay is impressive for a 48k game and the sound works well and the control is good too. Yes this is definitely one to play. This is Factory Breakout released by Poppysoft in 1984. Here we have a rather unusual game which, like Beachhead, has multiple sections. The idea is that you have to help a little robot called Zerky escape from the robot factory that has been taken over by aliens and is about to blow up. The first section has Zerky in his little pod, with deadly micron rays heading towards him. You have to rotate around and shoot the rays before they reach him. This is an interesting section and a bit tricky to keep up with. The screen layout is nice and colourful and gameplay is good although simple as you battle against time to avoid Zerky being blown to bits. If he escapes then it's on to the next section and here Zerky must get past the rejection line of the robot plant. Deadly lasers fire down at different speeds based on their colour and you have to time Zerky's movement so he doesn't get zapped. This is a quick section really that shouldn't prove too tricky. If you take too long though a killer canary will attack. Only in a Spectrum game will you get killer canaries. Then it's on to the last section which is a platform game where Zerky has to change the colour of the doors to finally escape. Here you have to use the lifts on each side to get to different levels and avoid the chasing robots. This is the trickiest part of the game. The chasing aliens are hard to avoid but they can be destroyed by using the flashing things. These work like power pills in Pac-Man and when used the aliens flash meaning you can kill them. You have to change the door colours three times before they vanish and allow Zerky to escape. Because of all these changes it's tricky to complete this section and when you do it's back to the production line and then back into the lift room again and this repeats several times each time with the aliens getting faster. The graphics are well drawn as you can see and nicely animated and move really smoothly. Sound is used well too with some small tunes and a variety of sound effects. This then is not a bad game and certainly a tough challenge on the later levels and I think it's definitely worth a quick play.
this new game is called Sardonic by, and stop giggling there, Penisoft in 2019. It's not very often we get shoot 'em ups on the spectrum, so I was eager to play this one when I saw it arrived on the forums. Here we have what is described as a character based shooter. That means the graphics move in character squares rather than being pixel smooth, but to be honest it really doesn't matter for this game. During the intro we get some nice music before the action begins. This is a vertical shooter and great fun to play, and it follows the usual format. You blast anything you see, dodge the alien bombs, and pick up anything you can see. You do have smart bombs that can destroy anything on screen, and these are replenished throughout the game. You can also pick up things like extra fire which doubles your laser shots, extra points which gives you extra points, and extra lives. The game plays really well, and it's a hectic pace. The enemies vary in colour and in look, and they move differently too. If you get far enough, then there's an end of level boss, and then it's back to more blasting. This game is very reminiscent of early character based games, but it seems better. I really enjoyed this, and if you like shooters, definitely give this one a try. It seems we're having a 1984 episode here, so the 16k game this time is Transversion by Ocean from 1984. This early game is a simple dodge and collect game and has been rewritten recently and put out under the name of Sector. This though is the original. You control a ship that has to enter the galactic grid and eliminate the alien pods, and to do this you just have to move over them. However, patrolling the grid are guardians, and these fire at you if you get in their line of sight. These patrolling enemies are at the top and bottom and left and right of the screen, and although this means their shots are quite predictable, they are still pretty tricky to dodge. The graphics are simple and move in character squares, and the control can sometimes be a little sticky, but it's a fun game to play and by no means easy. Sound is limited to a few blips and zaps, but they work well for this game. Each level has a different layout of pods, so things do change, to give a bit of variety. The only letdown for me was when you die, all the pods you have previously removed are put back, so you're starting all over again, and this can get very frustrating. A nice little game then, showing its age a bit, but worth a quick go. And for a better experience, definitely try Sector out as well. So I'm going to start at the front page and we better, move forward. We better say what we're doing though. For... That's a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. Um, <laughs> so this month we're going to do Crash number 10 from November 1984 for no reason other than we were having a discussion and we ended up thinking it might be a good idea start with a cover start with a cover always, as good as always Crash has excellent covers it does I don't think this is one of the best I like the idea though a joystick as a as a whatever it is yeah an being machine. attacked yeah yeah um, um, but if we're going to cover all of the magazine, or bits of the magazine, we're going to have to skip bits, aren't we, obviously? We are going to have to skip That's... bits. We've got the Sabre Wolf map winner as well, we... that wins the ACG amulet. I'd love to know where that was. Now, the advert for the prize is a bloody awful thing. It is an awful thing. It's got He-Man in it. <laughs> is that He-Man? Oh, well, it looks like He-Man to me. He-Man <laughs> He -Man holding a space helmet, and instead of holding aloft his mighty sword, he's holding aloft a mighty glowing thing. 
and he's got a rather small flat spaceship behind him and the letter T everywhere for some reason. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Uh, although five uh, five thousand pounds first prize. Anyway, skipping on Avalon from Houston with Gandalf in it. Is it Gandalf? Yeah, that, that's who it looks like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, I'm not sure about the little pink ghosty thing on the right hand side though. No, no idea what that's about. It looks like a jelly baby. It does look. It does look like a jelly baby. <laughs> a pink Casper. <laughs> oh dear, Cuthbert and the tombs of doom. Well, poor Cuthbert. I don't think he. Looking at him, he wouldn't last long in those tombs, would he? Mm. But but hang on a minute. This is a Spectrum magazine, and it's for the Commodore sixty four. I don't think Cuthbert had any games on the Spectrum. I, it was a yeah, it does say it was, wasn't it a dragon and the sixty four. Maybe maybe they thought people who had a Spectrum also had a Commodore sixty four. Yeah, because we always did, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get on to Kevin Toms. Kevin Toms. Silicon it. Joy. With some games that look atrocious. Oh, there's that boxing game that is really, really bad. None of those games look that good, do they, really? No, none of, you're right. None of the games look really good. I'm going to have to have a look at some of these. Yeah, Grand, Ascot, Grand Prix. Dracula's Castle and Chaotic Caverns. Oh, dear. Grand Prix Manager might be good if it was similar to Football Manager. Eureka. Had a prize. £25,000 25, prize. Blimey, that's, that's quite generous, isn't it? Yeah, I've got that game. Um, I've not reviewed it yet, but I do have a, a proper original copy of it. I bet that I bet that prize attracted a lot of people. It was Ian yeah. Livingston as well. He, I mean, him of game book fame. He, he he must have written a good adventure. Popeye. Quite an effective advert. Pop- doesn't tell you much about the game though, does it? Doesn't tell you much about the game. No screenshots. Doesn't tell you what it's about. Presume people would have expected it to be a copy of the arcade game. Had those big chunky graphics, didn't it? By Don something, Don, Don Priestley. Priestley. Yeah. Oh dear, I'm not sure about the space professor. <laughs> I'm not sure about the space professor either. No. What is it? Is it a game? The space professor will stretch your powers of calculation and concentration. Can you prove your genius and beat him at his own game? Oh, it's a, it's an education title. Yeah. Addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Yeah, I bet those sold well. Why has he got a rose? Um, it professors have roses. Do they? On their spacesuit. And he's got a notepad on his other arm. Cool. He- here's a question. Space professor, he's got a pencil behind his ear. How the hell can he get it out? Um, he's keeping his glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe somebody's glu- super glued it to his ear. And he's got a ruler in his pocket with no markings on it. What's the point of that? Um, drawing straight lines. <laughs> now you're grasping at straws. <laughs> Um, oh. Worst things happen at sea. That bloke looks like he's just had a nasty, nasty accident. <laughs> okay. He, he, is it the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz? It, it, well, you were a robot in Worst Things Happen at Sea. That's a brilliant game. Uh-huh. Have, have you said, I thought added realism play this standing in the bath. What? That's what it says on the <laughs> advert for added realism in really big words. Oh, that's not good, is it? I do hope the small print says, please don't actually play this in the bath. Don't take not your when you've got a, a computer plugged into the main. No. Yeah. Sabre Wolf map. Yeah. The results. There's the little trophy. Oh, it might tell you who. Uh, it does say winner. The winner, Stephen. yeah. Stephen. Kent. Westland. Yeah. Sabre Wolf advert. Actually, the next three. You've got Sabre Wolf, then Underworld, then Nightlaw. Ultimate, uh, ultimate adverts were brilliant. They were. I think the Underworld advert is my favourite of all adverts. It is good. I think it's give absolutely you that. superb. The problem with Ultimate adverts is, you know, we criticised the Popeye one for not having any gameplay or any details about the game. Yes. The yep. Ultimate ones didn't, but you almost expected a good game anyway from Ultimate. And Underworld, I, I, when I played it, it was like, oh God, I'd seen that advert. I was expecting something absolutely amazing. And yeah. I don't know, it just didn't live up to it. Skip to Project Future. I think that's a bit. Project. I don't future. think that's that good, I, is it? it? Its biggest claim to fame was it had over two hundred and fifty screens, but they all look the same to me. And I, and I tell you what, the I wouldn't mind buying the Earth for seven quid. <laughs> 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 and on that bombshell, that's the end. So that's the end of Crash Issue Ten. Re- quick review of adverts and other things in there. Here 
Here we are, back in Typing Corner. The game we're going to look at this time is called Gunfighter, and appeared in Sinclair User in May 1985. It was written by Mark Hinchcliffe, and consists of basic and machine code. The listing spanned two pages, and had some interesting content. Although the game used user-definable graphics, in the code they were represented as characters rather than graphics themselves. The end result, though, is the same, it's just a different way of doing things. After an hour or so of typing, the first attempt failed. Not a spectacular crash I was expecting from machine code listings, just things like the gun sight not moving, or the gun sight leaving artifacts on screen, that the fire button didn't work, and question marks were printed instead of graphics. The question mark problem was easily solved, I'd just mistyped a character number in the print statement. The gun sight not moving was a bit of a problem though, as all this was handled in machine code. That meant going through the data statements number by number again, but luckily I found four mistakes, which fixed the artifacts, but then the gun sight got stuck after pressing the fire key. A bit more digging around, and I found a go-to line missing a zero, which should have fixed the fire key, although I did find a few peaks missing zeros too, which should fix the artifacts. With all this in place, let's see if it works. Yes, it does. The game places you in the Wild West, hunting down the Boot Hill Gang. And at their ranch, they pop up randomly. Here you move your gun sight over them to kill them. If you take too long, they will shoot back, but not always hit you. Shoot enough and you complete the level. The gun sight moves a bit too quickly, really, and can sometimes be tricky to align up over the cowboy, but overall it plays quite well. The sound effects are also machine code, and the game has a nice border effect, created by use of the out command. For a typing game, this is quite a decent effort, really, and it's nice to finally see it. This is probably the first time it's been seen since it appeared in the magazine, and will be available from my website to download soon. Basically, that's the first prototype with the flaws, which is um, like with the sag in the case and the keys, but it's to show people why there's the delays. I think my first question is when I, when I get my next, I yep. get it out of the box, I yep. set it out up, what should I do first with it? Read the manual. <laughs> that's the FM. <laughs> Read the manual's good advice. Yeah. Um, um, play games. And then enjoy yourself. So I'll be able to play all Spectrum games? Yes. Uh, tap files from Tap Files? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah um, all Tap Files, plus, Snapshots. Yeah. yeah. Plus three disc images? Yes. yes. Oh, brilliant. Mm -hmm. So absolutely Just, anything that you could do on the Spectrum you'll be able to do on the next. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, it's, even, even the um, Russian clones? The two I do with. Mm -hmm. that's, that's brilliant. What about next games? So there's a next website, isn't there? Yes. Are there many free downloads? Um, uh, not yet. People are still working on, yeah. on most of the games. Um, there's a lot in development. Yeah. Um, the the specs because we've had the delays with the keyboard and the, the case, um, the plastics not being up to like standard for us anyway. Um, we've we've used this time to its maximum to enhance the features of the next by adding extra extra features. Um, so it's 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 a strange time for developers because yeah. you, you'd be doing something and then it's like oh we've got this extra feature that could have saved you a lot of time. <laughs> Back to the game. Sorry, yeah. uh, so you got your game, Bags yeah, in, in Space. Space. Is yeah. that available now? Not yet. No. We'll wait until it comes out. You wait until the next comes out. comes out, yeah. and will it be able uh, available to buy? Yes. Uh, uh, basically, the reason we're waiting for the, spec uh, the spectrum to come out is because we're trying to get a source for SD cards yeah. that's a decent, reliable source without actually physically having to go to China and, and like 
sits on the manufacturers to make sure they get it. Yeah. These ones to us. Um, Wheel bags in space come. I think next tend to come in like a Blu-ray type case, don't they? The games so yeah. far have come in then. Will it be all packaged like that? Yeah. Um, we're so talking with um, a guy who's going to organise getting us um, some like DVD cases, yeah. but with an SD card um, holder, in there. holder in there, so you know, I've got it bouncing around. And so is that the standard the format for releasing then on SD card? Yeah, because you, know, you just put the SD card in. If you, if you put it on USB stick, which would be a damn sight easier for us, because <laughs> you can get all of them like next to nothing, yeah. um, then it, it would be so much easier for us. And But it would mean that the person that's got the game would then have to use either a PC or a Mac or whatever to copy the file from the USB stick to an SD card. For me, what I love about the Next is uh, with doing a lot of downloadable content like working with iOS and Android and that um, the games that come out you never have a physical copy yeah. and that's one thing I miss like from the specy days and that where you, know, you do a game it's, maybe these games won't be out in shops but when you get it it'll be a, yeah. a physical thing that you can and a lot of um, like specy fans and that uh, into collecting games yeah. so uh, it's something for them to collect and put on the shelf and stuff and the, the main reason I, I wanted to do it is because you know, I, I want the physical yeah you want the yeah. physical I, 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 I prefer the physical I miss having a, like from back in the first game I ever wrote to until it went digital I've got a copy of every single game I wrote wow. so I would like to go back to being able to have a copy of the games that yeah. I've written well, the box is really good, and the, yeah. the, the keyboard is a lot better than I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've had a lot of people saying that um, today and yesterday. Um, they just played the, on the keyboard. They said I, I was I was typing away on a plus two the other day or something, and then, yeah. and then say and I, I didn't realise that it's not as good as I thought it was. And then I come to play on the next. And I, oh my God, this is perfect! It's like a it's almost like a new laptop style yeah. keyboard feel. But it, it is like the, old, the, the style the of it is the plus. Yeah. So it, it's got the benefits of the old and the new. So you got, because the, the, the tactile feedback on it is really nice, especially when you're playing games in QA or PM, or QA or space. Uh, it's, it's just so nice. Like, I was playing Bangs in Space the other day on it, and it's like, <laughs> this is actually better than playing it with a joystick. I think, it, I think it's always a good endorsement when someone who writes a game yeah. actually wants to play it themselves yeah. as well. It's, <laughs> it's, it, it's a good thing. It's a good sign when you say you yeah. play in Space. Can I ask about another project? Yeah. I know you were doing something called Quick Star with Simon yes. Butler. Yeah. Is is that anywhere on the horizon? Um, it is, but it's coming along slowly because yeah. I'm, I'm waiting on a few more graphics for, for, for it from him. Um, levels and I also need to do a bit of coding on it but I've been yeah. so busy with writing everything. manuals yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a 300 300 or 320 page manual but yeah. it's, it's, it's 300 at least and I presume it's going to be similar to the original Spectrum it's, manual it's, where it's it, it was absolutely everything it's, it's yeah, everything about it's, it's, it was sort of based on the original um, in the fact that style how it, how it read and, and the content all the way to, no, so it, it covers everything yeah. it covers all the old features and then it covers all the new features as well in the manual all the way to graphics and sprites yeah. and everything so it, it's a really good manual that's why I said when you get when you set it in the box it. read the manual and you'll know a lot more <laughs>